Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to biology. Uh, if you're watching this in order, this should be the first video that you are watching with me. Welcome to my class. Uh, just a couple disclaimers before we begin. First off, I did not make all of these videos in order. All right, uh, jumping around, but this should be your first one. Second disclaimer, I am recording this in June of 2020. So if you are watching this in the far distant future, hello from the past, uh, if I look different, if I say something slightly different than I do in class, that's the reason why. And third disclaimer is some people tend to come to me missing uh, some information, forgetting important information. So I'm actually gonna start off with that first. So if you feel comfortable with atoms and molecules, feel free to fast forward right now to the vocabulary. Okay, uh, let's get started. All right, starting off with the website at learn.genetics.utah.edu, check it out, it's right here. Uh, this is an atom, this is a scalar. So I can scale from the atomic size all the way up to a coffee bean, grain of rice, 12 point font typing, all right, that's where we're at. I'm gonna scale all the way, zooming all the way in. So we're doing, we're zooming right now and all the way to a single atom. So let's get a quick review going. This is one atom. I should be able to go even further in. If you could, and you would see that is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. You've seen all that in um, probably middle school. And if you get a bunch of atoms together, what you get are molecules, right? molecules, especially adenine right here, water right here, you are going to see those a lot in biology. Uh, but a molecule is just a bunch of atoms grouped together and how they group together, what they're made out of, determines what kind of molecule they are. Zooming out a bit more, and if you get a bunch of molecules together, you can actually make bigger molecules to do very important specific jobs. So tRNA, hemoglobin, antibodies, all things that we covered in either biology or anatomy, uh, all made up, these are all molecules made up of even smaller molecules. And then zoom in out a little bit more. Now we're going into things that we call uh, organelles, ribosomes, so that we, we will talk all about them. And then we get to things you've probably heard of before, viruses. Rhinovirus, hepatitis, HIV, the flu. So those are all made out of those bigger molecules. So recap, atoms get together, they form molecules. Molecules get together, they form bigger molecules. And then viruses are, all, you've probably seen this guy before, viruses are all made out of uh, those bigger molecules. Zoom in out even more, and what we got are, well, this right here is a bacteria, not a virus, but also made out of those bigger molecules. There's just a lot more of them. So look at the size difference here. This is HIV virus. This is the flu virus. This is the measles virus. They're tiny compared to the bacteria because these are living cells, which is what we're talking about, cells. These are not. And then zooming out even more, we have structures that you would see inside your cells. This is the mitochondria, the lysosome, this is the chromosome. Those are the structures that you have inside your cells. Zooming out even more, we got cells, red blood cells, skin cell. This is a type of nerve cell called a photoreceptor. This is a sperm cell, gentlemen, that's what you have. Zoom a little bit more out. And ladies, this is your egg cell. Again, those are all made out of those bigger molecules. They're just all clumped together certain ways. This is what we are gonna be talking about this year, cells. So I'm gonna zoom back in, all right? And this is what we wanna talk about. These are the structures inside your cells. They're all in here. These are all made out of the bigger molecules. These are made out of the bigger molecules. And we put these structures inside of your cells. That's this chapter. So recap, 
atoms come together to make molecules, molecules come together to make bigger molecules, bigger molecules come together to make all the structures of your cells and the cells that the structures are inside of, right? It's all these different molecules. We will be talking about those molecules and we will be talking about cells in general and what they do. And then as we zoom out even more, we see some other things that, well, where we started. I will come back and talk about this in a bit. So let's come back to our side here and let's get started with the vocabulary. All right, you can see a date in the top corner. I told you I'm filming in 2020, this is 2017. These are older vocab words, but the definitions have not changed, so they're still good. Don't get confused about those years. All right, we are in chapter one, the basic biological principles. We are now starting vocab, All right? And this chapter, is gonna be covering a little bit of everything for this entire year. So all year long, you will be seeing things that you get from this vocab list or the upcoming notes. The first word is cell. You just saw pictures of cell in my recap there, uh, my preview. What a cell is, is the basic unit of structure and function for all living organisms. And then I put a stop here, all right? This is your keystone definition they continue on with containing genetic material, cytoplasm, and a cell membrane. I think those details confuse you. So I'm putting a stop right here. A cell is the basic unit of structure and function for all living organisms. What does that mean? It means structure, what you're made out of. You are a walking pile of cells. That's it. This is what you're made out of. And function, they have different jobs. Different cells have different jobs that keep you alive. Right? And these are some pictures of cells right here. Next word down, organelle. A subunit within a cell that has a specialized function. Right? A subunit, where a cell is a unit, an organelle is a subunit. Sub means beneath or smaller than. So this is a uh, small unit inside this larger unit small things inside of your cells that have a specialized function. They have a job to do. Right. Uh, take a look at this word, organ L. Just like your body has organs, your cells have organ L's. Right? The organs have a job to do to keep you alive. The organ L's have a job to do to keep the cell alive. Take a look at ELL. My uh, prefix and suffix dictionary here, E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, I meant to say, means small, as an organelle. It literally means small organ. So just like the organs in your body that have a job to keep you alive, organelles have specific jobs to keep the cell alive. Small organ. All right, this is going to be a little bit faster. Unicellular. Uni means one cellular. So one cell made up of one single cell. Uh, you are looking at an amoeba, uh, paramecium, uh, uh, eugelina. I'm sure I mispronounced that one. Euglena. Uh, these are single celled organisms. This is the entire body of the amoeba, the one cell. It is, that's all it is or multicellular, like you, are made up of more than one cell. You have skin cells that have a job to do to keep you alive. You also have multiple skin cells to make up all of your skin. You have multiple liver cells to make up your liver. You have multiple everything, you get the idea. You are made up of multiple cells. Those are descriptive words. Unicellular describes single cells, multicellular describes multiple cells. These words are not descriptive. These are talking, these are names of a type of cells that sound very similar to these two words here, okay? Don't, don't get them confused. Prokaryote is always single-celled, is a single-celled organism that lack, lacks membrane-bound nucleus and specialized organelles, meaning it does not have a nucleus, it does not have organelles. It is single-celled. My favorite example is a bacteria. 
a eukaryote, a type of organism composed of one or more cells, one or more, meaning you can be single celled and still be a eukaryote. Right? Prokaryotes are always single celled, but not all single celled are prokaryotes. Right? Going back into my zooming over here, uh, this is the, again, you are multicellular eukaryote. You are made up of skin cells, red blood cells, things like that. Oops. Zoom in out. Here we got paramecium and amoeba, single celled organisms, but it does have a nucleus, it does have organelles, so it is a eukaryote. and you are a multicellular eukaryote, you have multiple cells that keep you alive. But they also have an, oops, they also have a nucleus and organelles keeping you alive. All right, now we're gonna zoom out even more. Okay, that zoom tool I was just using doesn't zoom out this far. But if you got all of those cells together, you can get a tissue. An anatomical unit composed of cells organized to perform a similar function. So a bunch of skin cells make up the entirety of your skin. A bunch of liver cells make up parts of your liver. A bunch of brain cells make up uh, your brain. Right? So tissues are just clumps of the same cell, same type of cell working together. And then zooming out even more, if you get a whole bunch of tissues together, you can make an organ. An anatomical unit composed of tissues serving a common function. What I mean by this? Every organ is actually made up of multiple tissues. Take a look at this brain. It has a frontal lobe. That is a tissue. You have a temporal lobe. That's a tissue. A parietal lobe. An occipital lobe. The cerebellum. The brain stem. Those are all different tissues. When you put them all together, you have one organ, the brain. And then zoom out even more and you get an organ system, an anatomical system composed of a group of organs that work together to perform a specific function. Example, let's go with the liver this time. The liver is an organ. It has a job. Uh, that job is to create chemicals for your digestion. It has a bunch of different jobs, but we'll go with that one. Right. Your organ system in this case, your digestive system has a bunch of different organs, your esophagus, your stomach, your lar uh, large intestine, your small intestine, your rectum, uh, pancreas. They all work together to digest your food. So it has a system of organs working together. Right? Then if you get a bunch of organ systems together, you get an organism. That is a word I expect you already to know, so it's not on this list. All right, I expect you to know what an organism is. You are an organism made up of a bunch of organ systems. Zooming out from there, population is a bunch of organisms, group of individuals, of the same species living together in a specific geographic area and reproducing. Right? Those are the three rules for what a population is. Right? You have to be organisms of the same species living together in the same place and reproducing. I mean, you specifically don't have to reproduce, but members of your species in that area have to. Okay. So Philadelphia has a population of humans. We are the same species, we live in Philadelphia, and our group of people are all reproducing together in this area. We have other populations in Philadelphia, pigeon population, rat population, squirrel population, right? They're all different populations in the same area. All right, moving away from that, we can actually zoom out even more, but that's a different chapter. So we'll move on to something else. Stimulus. Any kind of detectable signal that carries information. Right. Uh, that kind of sounds like something else too that's confusing if you're in my anatomy class. Uh, we're gonna talk about impulse. The impulse is the information going through your nervous system. Right. A stimulus is the thing that causes that impulse. In this case, the fire burning the hand, that's the stimulus. 
right? And then it sends the information as an impulse to your spinal cord and your brain and your body does something, right? So stimulus is any kind of information to your body. Heat is information. Light going into your eyes is information. A high five and you feel the impact in your hands. That is a stimulus. And your body will react accordingly. And 12, homeostasis. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a word that will haunt your nightmares in my class because it is everywhere. If you're in my anatomy class, a lot of people uh, do both classes at the same time. This is anatomy. The entire class is homeostasis the class, all right? This is an important word. The regulatory process in which an organism regulates its internal environment. Basically meaning your body keeps balanced. Something happens to your body, your body doesn't like it, so your body does something to put yourself back to normal. Example, I crank up the thermostat. The room gets hotter, so your body gets hotter. That's something that your body doesn't like. So your body does something to bring you back to normal. You sweat. And then the heat gets re released with the sweat and your body cools down. Right? You're still feeling uncomfortably hot, but you're not dying of heat. Right? So homeostasis is anytime your body does something to make things normal. Uh, another example. I shine a flashlight in your eyes. That's too much light. Your body hates that. So what happens? Your pupils get smaller because pupils are where the light goes into your eye. Smaller pupil means less light. Right? So now you're back to normal, a normal amount of light. All right, adaptation and evolution. These two words are usually taught together. You will have an entire chapter on these two words. First off, adaptation. People use it wrong. Adaptation does not mean to change. That is adapt, not adaptation. In fact, I tell people not even use the word adapt. You're talking about change, getting used to something, we say acclimate, right? In adaptation, people don't adapt. Individuals do not adapt. An entire species adapts. The entire group adapts through reproduction, all right? Once you're born, you will not adapt to anything, right? Your body's set in stone. If you get used to something, it gets hot, and then suddenly you're okay with it because you, you got used to the heat, that's called acclimating, right? That's the difference between adapt and acclimate. But either way, adaptation has nothing to do with change. An adaptation is something that you are born with, an inherited characteristic, right? Something that you are born with, something about your body that you are born with, that increases an organism's chance of survival, that helps keep you alive. Right? So look at this frog. It has, it's nocturnal, so it has really large eyes, really giant pupils to let more light in so it can see at night. It has camouflage. That's an adaptation. It doesn't just change, right? That is just a trait it has. It helps it blend in, helps it stay alive. Selective hearing, it can actually turn its ears off so it can sleep during the day. Toe pads help it stick to things, so that helps it stay alive. Permeable skin, meaning it can breathe through its skin. These are all traits that keep it alive. That's what adaptation, these are all adaptations. Right. I'm gonna, probably going to ask you in class, what is an adaptation that you have? What is a trait that keeps people alive? So think about that right now, and hopefully I'll remember to ask you in class. Moving on, evolution. Long story short, evolution is how you get these adaptations. Right. Long story long, it is a process in which a new species develops from a pre-existing species. See the key word in there? Species not individual, not organism, species. Individuals do not evolve. Groups evolve. Evolution happens through reproduction, right? Oh, what I crossed out here is something that we will get to in a future chapter. You are not ready for this. Again, this is your keystone definition. 
you're not ready for that part, so ignore it. All right, so how does evolution work? These are not the same giraffe changing, all right? This is a bunch of different giraffes across time. And once on a time, giraffes actually looked like this. They had smaller necks. And, well, a lot of them were eating a lot of the grass and running out. So any of them who just happened to have slightly larger necks were able to eat from the trees. That was a good adaptation. And if you have a good adaptation, it helps you survive, you're more likely to reproduce because you're alive to do it, right? So the ones that couldn't reach the trees were too busy fighting for food, where these guys were well fed, so they got busy getting busy, all right? So they end up having all the kids, and there are now there's a bunch of kids with longer necks. And now they're all competing for trees. So the ones with even longer necks are now getting more food, surviving better, and reproducing. And the next generation, the ones with the longest necks reproduce. So now we have a bunch of kids with even longer necks. And that happens over and over and over and over and over again until centuries later, we have the long-necked giraffe. It's all done through reproduction. That is what evolution is. The ones with the best adaptation for where you live is going to pass on those traits to the next generation. And they will improve through competition. That's what it was. These guys were competing. And the winners got to have sex. All right. That is your last definition. All right. Stay tuned for another video when we dive into the notes themselves. Good luck, and I will see you in class.